So let's get to the word of the living God. Second Chronicles, seventh chapter. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, and then the eleventh verse. Eleven. We'll start there. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto their prayers that is made in this place. Just look at somebody and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Uh, you'll, you'll get with me in a moment when you when you see what's in here. Say, say, say it again to somebody. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're going to get in here in a minute. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. David could not which was Solomon's father, could not build the temple. God forbid him to build because he had blood on his hands. Mm -hmm. God said, you can't do it. He was a man of war. Also, he killed Josiah. And so David had some things that God said, I won't let you do this. But Solomon, your son, he'll, he'll, he'll do that. And, and so Solomon, being young and tender, the thing he asked God for was wisdom and understanding how to rule God's people. And, and God gave him everything else, all the wealth. Uh, history lets us know that even the guys that we consider rich today were not rich compared to Solomon. He had wealth beyond anything that you and I can imagine. And wisdom with wealth. And so he began to build this wonderful edifice for God, and it was magnificent. And how many know that with God all I have nice things? I mean, if you have been doing something for God, y'all do excellence, right? We were talking, I was at a leader at this conference, and he asked me to speak on excellent Friday night. And anything you do for God, it ought to be excellent. You just shouldn't do it haphazardly. Right. And if you see how that temple was built and what was put in it and the money that was put in that temple, you'll say, good. God wants us. He wants things done in an excellent way. And so, he, and, he, and, and God was willing to give the money so it could be done in an excellent way. So everything that Solomon needed for that house to look the way God wanted God gave you to him. And so, but that was just the building. It had no power in it. It was as, as beautiful as it was, and they talked about that first temple, and as great as it was, and as magnificent as it was, say it was just the building. What made the difference was that Solomon began to sacrifice, and he sacrificed so, and he, they began to put such sacrifice in the house that, before the Lord that the Bible says the glory of the Lord filled that place. And it said that it filled the place so that the priest could no longer make. 
minister. And that word glory right there is that word called kabod. It means the weight of God just fell in that place. It was just so heavy. How many know we need the weight of God, the glory of God? You see, when the glory of God comes, preaching don't have to, you don't have to preach. I mean, you can, but you don't have to. You don't have to lay hands on the sick. God will lay hands on the sick. You don't have to deliver people. God just will deliver people. When the glory of God hit us, so as they began to sacrifice one after another, see, they were offer, offering up to God, and as they were sacrificing one animal after the other, after a while, see, that sacrifice was made unto God, and God began to just pour out his glory. It was like a smoke that just filled the temple. I mean, the priest just couldn't do it no more. How many know we need the glory? How many know we need the glory of God to return to the house of God? I'm, just, I, I'm not just talking about this place. I'm talking about the church in general. We need the glory of God to return to the house of God so that people will reverence and fear God once again. Uh-huh. We, we need a move of God. We, we're talking about this country and the condition that it is. But unless something happens in the church, then the glory of God in the church. And I mean, I, we need a revival. We need to see the glory of God once again where it hits the place. You see, when the glory of God hits the place, you don't got to tell people to fear God. They'll recognize that. They better fear God. The reason why people don't fear God in these days is because they have not really seen the glory of the living God. Because when His presence overwhelms you will reverence it. And so they began to, as they were worshiping God, the glory of God hit that place. And the Bible says that the people left at, him, at, the, at, at the end of the feast and the end of the sacrifice, the people left and they were happy. That's what happens when you spend time in the glory. You can't leave the glory of God sad. You, you can't leave out of the glory of God depressed and upset. When the glory of God, when the glory the place. When you leave that place, you will be changed. And so that's what's leading us into this 11th verse. The 10th verse said, and on the and on the 3 and 20th day of the 7th month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord has showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. I mean, when they left out of that place, they had been there sacrificing, praising, and magnifying God. And when they went back home, that's the way it used to be when yeah. the people got saved. Yeah. You had to come down and carry them out of the church. They, they couldn't walk out on their own power. Somebody else had to carry them. When they left the house of God, they left the house of God not sad, not depressed, not complaining, not murmuring, but they left
king's house. And all that came in, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord. And in his house, he prospered effectively. You see, when the glory come, everything began to prosper. Yes, uh -huh. You won't have to worry about what money is coming your way or health is coming your way. Let me tell you, when the glory comes, you can just be in it. You can get healed, whatever it is. See, it ain't like just the water coming down trouble and touching one or two persons with the glory of God. Is. And I'm telling you, I, when I, as I'm spending time before God, I know it in my spirit. Not just church, but the glory of God. It'll change your mind. It'll change your attitude. I've been in that glory a few times. You can't stay the same. You can't act the same. You can't think the same. There's too many people sick. We need some glory. Now, I believe in praying and laying hands on people and praying the prayer, the prayer of faith for people to be well. But when the glory People's situation change. People's whole life change. Husband that was mad at wife, mad at wife that was mad at husband, and mother and father that was at all. When the glory and and that was at all. When the glory come, it'll have your child changing their attitude, and they don't know why they were saying humming to themselves and breaking down and crying. I'm talking. I'm not talking. See, I, I, I'm not telling you, there, there is a glory. And I, I'm telling you, God is challenging us to make this you turn. You see, we keep looking at the nation. We keep looking at our neighborhood. We keep looking, and, and, and you know what? I'm hearing it all more often now. Well, this used to never happen in our neighborhood. Don't worry, it's going to happen everywhere. It ain't no safe place. That's it. That's Stop way. looking for it. Because yeah. you don't know who's in the house next door. Right. You don't know who's what's on their mind. What the devil is telling their mind. See, we need a move of God. But it must start in the house of God. But when it starts, it affects everything. This is Charles Finney. We're going to the city. There was a preacher in the 1800s. And when the glory of God would hit that place or hit that city, bars were closed, nightclubs were closed, all types of places were closed. Because when the glory of God hits, it affects everything. It affects everybody. It affects people that are not saved and don't even get saved, but they are reverence for God the glory. When the glory Yeah, the 
station to get the record. I just turn on my GPS. But every so often, when I'm going into an area that I'm not familiar with, I will run up on the street, and the street will get up on me too soon. And I'll pass it up, and my GPS will go off and say, make the U-turn. Now, if I make the U-turn when the GPS tells me to, then I can kind of get back on track quickly. But if I keep on going and say, yeah, I picked up, then there have been times I find myself way out the way because it's taking, it's still going to get me there. Now it's going to take more time. And see, there are times that God is telling us to make a U-turn. I'm telling you, he said, make a U-turn. Our feeling, he said, make a U-turn. Check out what you're doing. Because
See, God was talking to Solomon about his people. He was saying, now there may come a time, because I've got all this prosperity, and all everything is going good for you. He said, I know what that can do to my people. It can get them distracted. It can get them to, into a place that they're not really focused on me. See, the thing about good happens in your life all the time, because we want that, don't we? That's what we want, don't we? But see, good don't balance your life out. If good is always happening to you, it doesn't balance your life. It takes some uh, adversity and some affliction to get your attention. Because in that adversity, in that affliction, it makes you cry out to God, Lord! It makes you get sincere. So 
somewhere. And so we're calling his name. 